Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I'm here to help you make sense of everything that you've been learning in class. Yes, we're still talking about the mole, but in this lesson, we're gonna use mole conversions to calculate hydrates. Not only are we going to do some calculations, we're gonna use those calculations to name and write formulas for a hydrate. What's a hydrate, you ask? Just keep watching and I'm gonna teach you all about that. So go ahead and grab something to write with, calculator, periodic table, and let's get started. So we're gonna determine the hydrate formula and name. This is a lot like empirical formula. Not just like empirical formula, but close enough to where if you get empirical formula, hydrate's gonna be really easy. But first, let's talk about what a hydrate is. A hydrate is a compound with water molecules trapped inside or just an ionic compound with water attached to it. I'm hoping you saw the word hydrate and expected something to be about water. Okay, so hydrate, we need to know that definition, but we also need to know the opposite of that, which is the anhydrate. And that prefix an, that's just the opposite. So if hydrate has water, an anhydrate is what's left over after the water is removed. So if we have the anhydrate plus water, then that gets the hydrate. I'm gonna give us a little bit more information as we go, but let's go ahead and just start our first example. A 15.67 gram sample of a hydrate of magnesium carbonate was heated without decomposing the carbonate to drive off the water. The mass was reduced to 7.58 grams. What is the formula of the hydrate? Don't let this long question overwhelm you. Let's break it down. We need the mass of the anhydrate and the water to work the problem. And sometimes it might be given to you. Other times you might have to do a little bit of subtraction to figure all those numbers out. So in this question, it told us the mass of the hydrate, 15.67. It also told us the mass of the anhydrate. It just didn't say, hey, this is the mass of the anhydrate. It said this is the mass after we've driven off the water. That's the anhydrate. And so if we subtract those numbers, that gets us the mass of water. And that's what we need, the mass of the anhydrate and the mass of the water. These rules should look pretty similar to the rules of empirical formula. It's the middle two rules. We're going to do mass to mole divided by small. It doesn't rhyme because we're missing the first rule and the last rule. But hey, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Two shorter rules, that's a little bit of a shorter problem. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say empirical formula, go check that video out. Okay, let's get back to this. Since we're going to have to do mass to mole, that means we're gonna have to figure out the molar mass. And before we figure out the molar mass, we need to know what the formula for magnesium carbonate is. Magnesium is a plus two, carbonate is also a two. That's a one to one ratio, MgCl3. Like I said, we are going to need the molar mass of the anhydrate and of water. First, let's just look at the molar mass of the anhydrate. We had one magnesium, one carbon, and three oxygen for a total molar mass of 84.313. I know I sped right through that without even telling you what to do. Those numbers are from the periodic table, and if you need help with molar mass, go check that video out. Okay, so we got the molar mass of magnesium carbonate. We also need the molar mass of water. Now, while you're calculating the mass of hydrates and you calculate the molar mass of water, you're gonna start memorizing this number. Not on purpose, just because we use it so often. And that's okay, if you didn't memorize, then don't calculate it, just use it. But this is our first time, so let's calculate it. We've got two hydrogens, we've got one oxygen. We get all those numbers from the periodic table, add them up, we get 18.015. Now keep those numbers handy, because we're gonna need them in a second. Okay, so let's go back to the mass of the anhydrate and the mass of water. We're going to take mass to mole, so we do need to do a small dimensional analysis problem. Okay, so we've got this dimensional analysis problem set up for both of these. And if we have our 7.58 grams of magnesium carbonate and we divide by the molar mass because we gotta cancel out those grams, we're going to get 0 0.899. And if we do our water problem, 8.09 grams, so we've gotta put that molar mass on bottom to cancel out our units, we're gonna get 0 0.44907. Now don't round here. We need as many of these digits as possible I use about four or five. Okay, so we did mass to mole. Now we need to divide by small. Divide by small means just compare our answers and whichever one's smaller, divide by that one. Okay, so 
the anhydrate should always be the smallest one, always, because we're trying to figure out how many moles of water is attached to our ionic compound. So one of these is always going to be one, and the other, you should get a whole number here. If you don't, you've done something wrong. Go back and calculate your molar mass. So we have a one to five ratio. For every one anhydrate, we're gonna have five moles of water attached. Let's look how to write that formula and name that compound. Okay, so the anhydrate is magnesium carbonate, but when we consider that it's a hydrate with five water molecules, it's a pentahydrate. So the full name is magnesium carbonate pentahydrate, and we would write that formula we would have magnesium carbonate and then a dot or an asterisk, five moles of water. That shows our ratio. For every one molecule of magnesium carbonate, we're going to have five molecules of H2O. Let's look at another problem because that first problem is always a doozy. A five gram sample of hydrated barium chloride, BaCl2, and some number of moles of water. Because remember, a hydrate has moles of water trapped inside. We don't know how many. That's the whole point of the problem. It's heated to drive off the water. After heating 4.26 grams of anhydrous barium chloride, BaCl2, remains. What is the value of N in the hydrates formula? That's just wanting us to figure out what's the number of moles of water. Just like the last problem, but it's worded a tiniest a bit different. So if we analyze this problem closer, we see that the hydrate is five grams. After we drive off the water, we have 4.26 grams. That's the anhydrate. So if we subtract, that means we drove off 0.74 grams of water. Because remember, to work this problem, we really need just the mass of the, the anhydrate and the mass of water. Okay, so before we start working the problem out, remember we've gotta have the molar mass because we've got to do mass to mole. Anytime you've got mass and a mole problem put together, you gotta find the molar mass. So barium chloride, one barium, two chlorines, we add all that up, we get 208.23 grams per mole. One mole of barium chloride is 208.23. And then if we look at water, again, H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, that molar mass is 18.015. So we've gotta start with the mass of our anhydrate and the mass of our water. We need to convert these masses to moles with just a short little dimensional analysis problem. Okay, if we set that up, remember we're given grams, we've got to cancel with grams. And anytime you cancel with grams, you use the molar mass. So we put barium chloride's molar mass down, 208.23. We put water's molar mass down, 18.05. We're gonna divide the given divided by the molar mass. Okay, so we put that in the calculator. And remember, we're not wanting to round. Use a lot of those digits. So we have gone mass to mole. Now we need to divide by small. So we need to look at those two answers and decide which one is smallest and divide each of them by the small. Because remember, we're trying to create a ratio. Always one anhydrate to so many water. And in this instance as well, that means we did it right. The anhydrate equals one because that was the small, so we divide by itself and we get the one. And then we get water's moles and we divide it by the small, 0 0.02046, and that gets us a two. So it's a one to two ratio. For every one formula unit of barium chloride, we're gonna have two molecules of water. Okay, so let's put those numbers to the formula and the name. So we have barium chloride, BaCl2, that was the anhydrate, and then the dot, that doesn't really mean multiply, because remember, the water is attached. So barium chloride with two waters attached. And then we name that barium chloride dihydrate two waters. Remember that prefix di means two. I've got one more example for us. A hydrate of magnesium chloride is present and then the following data is collected. So I was trying to find us a different kind of question. So these are the things that would be in the data table. Okay, so we have mass of crucible and hydrate. That's 25.290. And then we just have the mass of the crucible all by itself, 22.130. Then we've got the mass of the crucible and the contents after heating, that's 23.491. So remember, hydrates with the water, we heat it, we drive off all of the water, and now what we have left is the anhydrate. If we use this information, we can subtract the mass of the crucible from the mass of crucible anhydrate and get just the mass of the hydrate. And then we can do the same thing for that bottom number. 
if we take the mass of the crucible and the stuff that's left over after we drive off the water, we'll be left with the mass of the anhydrate, 1.361. And remember, if we just subtract those numbers, we get the mass of the water. We need the mass of the anhydrate and the mass of water. Okay, so now we're ready to start the problem. We've got to start by getting that molar mass because the very first step is mass to mole. Here's our mass, we're going to convert to mole, and since mass is in the problem, we've got to find that molar mass. So if we start by finding the molar mass first, we've got magnesium chloride, we've got one magnesium, two chlorines, we add all that mass up from the periodic table and we get 95.205, and then remember we do the same thing for water. Like I said, you end up doing water so often, you might end up having that 18.015 just memorized. And if you do, just go ahead and use it and you don't have to show your work for finding the molar mass of water. So we need to do dimensional analysis to solve for the mole. Because remember, step one is mass to mole. We're given grams, so we've got to cancel out with grams. We're gonna put the molar mass in grams on bottom. And so we're gonna divide. So for magnesium chloride, we're going to have 0.014295 moles. And then water, we're going to have 0.097696. So that's mass to mole. Now we need to do divide by small. The anhydrate should always be the small. If not, that's your clue that something went wrong. By this point, we should be getting whole numbers. The anhydrate, since that's going to be the small and we divide by itself, it's going to be the one. One mole of anhydrate for every seven moles of water. Or we can say it backwards. Seven moles of water for every one mole of magnesium chloride. Let's look at the name and formula for that. Magnesium chloride, hepta, because hepta is seven. Magnesium chloride heptahydrate. Or if we were writing the formula, MgCl2, because magnesium is a plus two, chlorine is a negative one and then connecting that with seven moles of water. That's our lesson on hydrates. I'm really hoping that if you've been watching the whole video series, by the time you get to hydrates, we have had so much repetition with this mole conversion, this should be a breeze by now. And if it's not, don't worry, it'll come. It just takes practice, just like with anything you do. To be good at it, you've got to practice. I know we're trying to make that A in chemistry, and the only way you're gonna be able to make that A is if you just keep practicing. I know this to be a fact. I've been teaching chemistry for a really long time. Are your friends struggling in chemistry? Share these videos with them. And until next time, bye y'all.